what if I told you, you don't need expensive hardware, expensive computer, expensive server to run your home lab services. So today I want to show you uh, with this TomTon, it has an N100, eight gigs of RAM. I went ahead and uh, I'm just going to use this dock right here. And this is an old hard drive I pulled out of my drawer. I'm just going to show you what we can run. I went ahead and set up a little home uh, lab, a couple of services and uh, Nginx proxy manager, our vault warden for our password. So uh, keep tuned as so we can look what we have. Hello, this is Rob with Tech. Uh, in this video, I want to show you that we don't need a lot of power, uh, an expensive server or something to run some basic home labs. So uh, I already pre-configured this. I like to use Open Media Vault. It's based on Linux Debian. But if we go into the storage and we go to disk, uh, I went ahead and added uh, this 256, uh, or I think it's 250 or 256 a gig uh, hard drive, old hard drive that I had laying around. And this is just for the example. Um, so we went ahead and created that share folder for it. It's right here, data. Um, I already created the SMB share. Uh, so this is not a set of videos, more of I want to show you what I have set up for this video. The other thing is uh, I already set up also uh, Compose, Docker Compose. Remember that whenever you want to get Docker Compose, uh, you need to install Open Media. I mean, well, not Open Media, the uh, OMV Extras. Uh, you have to find that uh, that command and then you have to SSH into your system and run it as root and that will give you uh, if you go into system OMV extras tab in here you would enable this docker repo remember that you need the OMV extra for this after you do that you click save you accept plugins the plugins that I like to use is flash memory this one what it does is that it kind of helps prevent writes to your media so it kind of extends the life for them uh your ssd or if you're using a usb i use ssds but uh i still use it to prevent uh kind of limit rights the other one that gets installed on my is share root uh here on the bottom share root this one gets automatically installed when you install open media i mean not open media OMV extra and then the other one that we install after you enable the docker repos is compose so if we go into services compose and we go into files I already set up all of these containers and it's just to show you that you don't need a lot of a lot of uh, RAM or a lot of uh, CPU power to run all of this I mean if you guys just start getting started uh, any old computer, any old laptop can do. Uh, in this case, this machine itself is running 8 gigs of RAM. Uh, so in this example, I installed the uh, Hemendel. This is for a home page. I actually didn't I installed it, but I didn't set it up. Our uh, Jellyfin. Now I misspelled it. Uh, well, also, I want to show you how to do the encoding. Uh, Nextcloud. I installed Nextcloud, the Nginx proxy manager, so we can have domain names to redirect. Uh, we also have Pyho installed on here, Portainer, Uptime Kuma, and Valve Warden. So I'm not going to go over how I installed them. I just want to show you that even in, even running this much containers, I mean, you can, there's a lot more, but this is in the very basic uh, set, right? So now what I'm going to do is if we go into Nginx Proxy Manager, uh, this is the ones, the proxy host that I created, uh, this robhomelab.dns.org. You can go to duckdns.org and then in there you can sign in with your Google account or you can sign in with your GitHub account and you can create a domain, but you're always going to have duckdns.org. That's the, the free way that you can do it. So the one that I got here for this example is robhomelab.dns.org. Uh, and then I'm adding in front of it Jellyfin or Nextcloud Pass. Uh, I'm not gonna go in super in depth in this. I mean, if you want to see a video for Nginx Proxy Manager, let me know and, and I could create that. Um, there's a lot that goes to it that I need to explain. But in a nutshell, it's like this one. If I click it, it goes to Jellyfin uh, or Nextcloud or Pass. This one is for the Valve Warden to go to to where we have our password manager. Pi-hole, This goes to our Pi-hole. Router. This would be our where we configure our, our internet switch this is the switch where our managed switch so first of all i, I want to go over the resources right so we'll go back to this 
So we go back to Open Media Go dashboard. This system itself is running an Intel N100 and it's 8 gigs of RAM. If you look right now here, even though running all those processes, I'm only using 1.56 gigs of uh, memory and it's it's a 5.96 gigabytes free. So like 79% free, uh, even with, with running all, all of that services. So first of all, we're going to go into Jellyfin. So like I said, if you do jellyfin.robhomelab.dns.org, this is going to hit the Jellyfin server that we have, the container. Now, if you try this URL, if you're seeing this video, you try this URL externally, this is not going to work because it is set up locally in my network. And for you to understand that, if we go to our Pi-hole server, um, here on our Pi-hole, or well, let me log out of this one. I'll go through the actual Pi-hole, so here. I mean, it's the same one. I just want you to see that I have it working. So here you go into local DNS, DNS records, and all of the ones that I've been adding that you see on Nginx Proxy Manager, you, you have them right here, like Jelly Phoenix Little Pass. Now, I always, you have to, I specify a private IP address, 192.168.1.83. This is our Nginx Proxy Manager's IP address. So that's how, where that's coming from. So it's like I said, Duck DNS gives you a domain. But if in order, if you want to add Jellyfin, you only have up to five domains that you can add. So you can add there jellyfin.robhomelab.duckdns.org. And then you can specify the private IP address so you can throw it your traffic to your Nginx proxy manager. But the way that I did is I just got one domain. And then in here, I'm managing the, the DNS request through the Pi hole. So that's what I do. It's like right now, if I put this, let's say I'm look, trying to connect to the next cloud, let's just say, and I put this this domain, it's gonna go, it's gonna resolve this name to this IP address. This IP address is gonna throw the traffic into Nginx Proxy Manager. And then actually, Nginx Proxy Manager has the IP for this, for our next cloud instance. So that's how that works in a nutshell. Okay, so we covered that. Here's our pie hole. Um, it, it's already, Uh, working you can see some of the traffic on there now for the router this is what i was saying uh, router.rob home lab uh here in the dns on the wan settings you, this is where i put the uh pihole servers uh, dns ip address uh before you do this in case that you do have a pihole uh, make sure it works because if, if you were to change it and then for whatever reason it's not working you're going to kill your internet because you won't have uh, any DNS resolutions. So going back, okay, I got a little lost the train of thought there. So going back to Jellyfin, just let me log in with my user. Now for copyright reasons, of course, I'm going to blur the content. But uh, first of all, before we do this, what I'm going to show you is we're going to go back to I mentioned dashboard. I'm going to go with playback. I'm going to go ahead and turn off hardware acceleration. Now, this isn't by I'm not no expert here. Uh, this video that we're using for testing is not a 4K file, so it's just a, a 1080p, but we're going to transcode to 720p. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off this just so I can show you the performance benefit that the N100 has if you use the Intel QSV. So going back to dashboard, we're going to go ahead and play this movie right here on his. I'll mute this and then we go into playback info. I'm going to blur the movie, but I just, what we're trying to see is right now is direct playing, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and change the settings so we can go into uh, transcoding. Okay. So here you see that it's transcoding now. Uh, and you can see the frame rate is 150 FPS. Now we go back to Open Media Vault and we look at our CPU utilization. You see that's that our CPU utilization is at 85.2, so it's almost like all the way pin. And of course, this is just one particular service. I mean, uh, one particular stream of the movie. So 118. 86 so what i wanted to show you now is if you do the hardware encoding and you have to modify the yaml file that you use for the container to allow that so i'm just going to go ahead and stop this from playing i want to go into my dashboard 
playback and then we're going to enable Intel Quick Sync. I'm not sure exactly on all of them on which ones to enable. I think it's just the AV one, the one that's not supported. Uh, and I didn't mess with the low power. So I could be wrong. If you, th you guys see this is incorrect, let me know in the comments so I can fix it. But uh, this is the way I did it. And then uh, save it. Now we'll go back to Jellyfin and then we go in here. Clear info. We are still using transcoding, but now you can see that we have 279 frames. Now we go back to Open Media Vault. You can see that our CPU is more relaxed now at 25%. Um, so that's Jellyfin. Uh, if you all are wondering how to get the the Jellyfin uh, with hardware encoding, you can go ahead and I have another video in in my contest. I go ahead and I'll put a link to it where I go in more in detail how to get the hardware transcoding working on Jellyfin when you're using container application. And that would only work if you have like open media vault bare metal or like you want to bare metal. It's not gonna work if you have it under like a VM like Proxmox, just letting you know. So the next one that we have is Nextcloud. So also we have our domain here, right? Nextcloud.robhomelab.dns. Oh, you know what? I should just stop this. I'm just gonna log in. And I didn't go crazy on the setup. I just installed the recommended apps, created a test node so we can try out this system. I know a lot of people want me to show them how to get this. Uh, if that, you guys want to see how to get uh, Nextcloud on, on the proxy with Nginx Proxy Manager, let me know so I can start working on that. So in here, we can go back and we can see that the we didn't save the note. Okay, check mark. Well, let's see. Oh, I guess it automatically it just doesn't show. Let's put something over here. Oh yeah, because we're looking at the the title. Uh, that's why it's not changing. But yeah, that's uh next cloud. Let's see what else we have. The router switch. This is the Wangling switch that I reviewed. Um, if you guys haven't seen that, let me know. I mean, check in my, my previous videos to this one. You should see. I think this one. Yeah, I guess something I didn't configure it properly on the Nginx proxy manager, but uh, what I was going to show is actually 99. This is what I was going to show, the Wangling switch. This is a managed switch. I, I do have a video for this. Uh, I, I did receive this. Uh, they sent it to me for a review. And it's been working fine. It's a 2.5 gig 8 port switch and a 1 10 gig SFP plus port. I haven't tested the 10 gig, but the 2.5 gig and the lag works perfectly. Now let's see what could have went wrong here. Now it looks correct. Yeah, I would have to check this one. I'm not sure what's going on with this entry itself. I know I had more stuff like uh, services. Oh, the password manager. You, you go ahead and click this password manager. Uh, I, this was a little difficult to install, but once you get the hang of it, uh, it's, it's it's fairly easy to install. So on this one, I did a, a random email. So I had created a demo user and it's just basically the same, the default uh username and password for open media vault um this is self-hosted password manager that we have uh, don't have too much information on this you guys want to see how to install this let me know we can create a video for that in a container i'm going to edit this in uh i forgot to mention the smb share so we did create an smb share like i said uh, in that this is the ip address for the open media vault that we have here running in the background 
and uh, we create this data folder and we have jellyfin movies i do want to show you like copying um it's not gonna be it's fast right now because it's um it's using ram but as soon as it runs out of ram it's gonna go to the speed of the hard drive so that's the old hard drive is doing that 126 mbs but you can see that it started out strong but that is for the for smbs i mean smb and a network share so i mean if you guys need something simple just want to get something working smb share uh jelly fiend so you can watch some movies um uh, anything right password manager this will be a good starting point uh, but that'll be all for this video uh remember tell me let me know guys what do you want to see next i mean what type of videos any more containers or uh any more hardware reviews let me know so i can uh like take note and start working on, on that also let me know how you would have done this differently i know it's a little janky having this mini pc as a top top ton pc that we have a external dock but i mean it's a little janky but it works so let me know if you guys would have done anything differently if i did something wrong let me know guys uh, thank you if you stick to the end of the video i appreciate you thank you for your support make sure you leave a like if you like the video comment if you have any questions and don't forget to subscribe. Y'all have a great day.